Welcome back to Teresa's Dead. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. I have an awful garbage filthy mouth, so viewer discretion is advised. But if you're not into that or weird shit in general, this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to exit out the video here. No harm, no foul, but I'll remember our Tom fondly. Y'all, I am so excited for today's video because it's just a good old get ready with me story time edition where I'm going to tell you a very long winded fun story about the airport and about flying in general. It's, it's a hoot. Also in today's video, I'm going to be showing you some new products that I picked up recently that I've been playing around with that I kind of don't really know how I feel about them quite yet. Like sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're fine. I don't know. Um, this is of course the overall look, which spoiler alert, ta-da. <laughs> Hope you want to see how I created this look and the trials and tribulations of it. Feel free to keep on watching. But before I get all Andy Rooney, a word from today's sponsor. This episode of me being a garbage, garbage princess is brought to you by Blissey. Y'all know I have been talking about Blissey for a while now. And if you've never heard of them, well, baby, let me educate you. Blissey offers 100% mulberry silk pillowcases that give you better hair, better skin, and incredible sleep. Mmm. This is a completely natural and hypoallergenic pillowcase designed by a team of experts that does wonders for your overall health while you sleep. So y'all, the proof is in the pudding, okay? Everyone has been clamoring as a blade over my beautiful hair and my beautiful skin. And I have to thank Blissey for being one of the contributing factors that not only make me look great, but feel great as well. Honestly, I am so spoiled by Blissey, I really am. I had recently traveled to New York twice last month and the first time I stayed with my mom. You best believe this past Mother's Day, I did gift her a few Blissey pillowcases. So at least while I slept uncomfortably on that couch. My head was calm, cool, and collected with the Blissey pillowcase. And I wish I thought about that on my return back to New York, <laughs> but I didn't. This time I had to stay in a hotel and I had to slum it using a standard pillowcase. And let me tell you, it was the worst sleep ever. I am truly, truly spoiled now. I can't go back, I can't. The beauty of Blissey pillowcases is that they regulate temperature. And now this little garbage baby runs warm. And with a normal pillow, I find myself restless, always trying to find the cooler side of the pillow. But since switching to Blissey pillowcases, I've noticed one, I don't feel gross when I wake up in the morning. I no longer have to deal with gross night sweats. <laughs> Two, it's improving my hair and skin while I sleep. And three, I no longer have to fight to find the cool side of the pillow because every side is the cool side of the pillow with Blissey. So whether you're looking for a great gift idea or you just want to spoil yourself rotten with the best sleep of your life, take a chance and try Blissey. Not only do they come in multiple colors, but of course my favorite is black, just like my soul. But they also have hair ties. Do yourself a favor and pick up a hair tie or two. Your hair will thank me later. So join me on the other side of comfort because once you try, baby, you will not go back. Mark my words. Go to blissey.com forward slash Teresa or just click the link below and you'll get an additional 30% off your order and get free worldwide shipping. So go on and get your energy back. Sleep better and improve your hair and skin with Blissey Silk Pillowcases. That's B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com forward slash Teresa or just click the link below. Code automatically applied at checkout for an additional 30% off. Thank you Blissey for sponsoring this garbage queen and y'all go support the sponsors that support your garbage queen and your garbage queen's mom because let me tell you my mother has said to me T I can't I can't use it I can't use regular pillowcases anymore and for that I say you're welcome. <laughs> anyway let's go look at past me look like not this. Good morning, my little blueberries. Uh, um, I don't know what's going on over here. I have to get ready early today because I'm going to the movies and uh, it's hot, bitch. Okay. <laughs> it's fucking hot here. I don't want to put a lot of shit on my face. So we're gonna call this like a no makeup, makeup, no makeup, makeup, no makeup look. But we're still gonna put on 50 pounds of makeup because that's all I know, all right? But we're gonna play with a lot of new products today. I played around with like maybe a handful of times and I still don't know how I feel about them. They're like, you know what I mean? Like, they're those kind of products. We all have those kind of products where you're like, it's neither good or bad, it's just in the middle. And sometimes I feel like that's worse because it's mediocre. <laughs> But um, I need to cover this redness, but I'm gonna do my eyebrows really fast because I find that if I do my base first and then I try to put the little template stencil thing, I usually wind up fucking it up, like especially over in this part of my face because I press down so hard on that goddamn stencil, you know? So let me shut up really fast, just do this. And uh, we'll just, I, I have a very funny story about airport security. <sighs> So if you are curious to know, this is from the Brow Trio. I've talked about them a few times on my channel. I love this thing. If you have problems with your brows, this is probably one of the easiest 
fucking fail-safe things to ever use. It's so good. Honestly, it's perfect. It's perfect for those that really struggle with their brows. But I will say, for me, I found the best application is to kind of use this as a guide and just quickly kind of go over my brow hairs. I don't like to make them too dark. And then I use a Fenty brow pencil just to fill in the rest because in theory, I could go back and stamp on more product, but I often find that if I do it the second time, never lines up and my brow is in this big. <laughs> so for me, it's like, it's a one and done. And then I just go in with the Fenty to clean it up. Like how sweet am I, right? But I don't know if you could see what I'm talking about. I have like a dent now on my forehead. <laughs> And it's basically thanks to me taking the template and pushing it down on my head. Love that for me. But this is so much faster than the normal way of doing my eyebrows, which would take me literally fucking 30 minutes sometimes. Because I'd often find that be one bigger than the other or one would come in further than the other. It's so fucking annoying. Honestly, if I never had to do my brows again, that would be amazing. Okay. All right, eyebrows done. I look adorable. I'm going to, actually no, we're gonna do my ritual to feed thorn oil first. And then we're gonna put a little color corrector right here just to try to neutralize it out. I hope for the best, you know? I hate airplane purple, I really do. I don't like it, never liked it. I always feel uncomfortable. And it's not even so much of just, you know, being fat and flying. It's just, I don't like it, you know? Uh, it suddenly, it starts to have a little turbulence. I'm already like, you know, praying, thinking that, you know, I'm gonna see my maker, okay? <laughs> like that's the extent of how much I don't like flying. Back in 2015, a little bit about me. So I turned 30 in 2015 and I also got married within a week apart. So on our honeymoon slash my 30th birthday trip, I was like, you know what? We're gonna spoil ourselves. We're gonna sit in first class. And that was the beginning of the end because now I can't go back. I can't go back to coach, okay? I've, tr no, I've actually never tried because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't fly very often. And so when I do fly, it's like, I don't mind taking the extra money to splurge because I wanna be comfortable. Sitting in economy is not comfortable at all, right? It is uncomfortable. It hurts. If I could somehow chop my fucking arms off and put them in the overhead to stow them, I would, okay? Like, because I feel like I just try to collapse in on myself like a dying star. It never happens, all right? What am I gonna put on my face? Oh yeah, color corrector. I'm gonna use the Eborian because it's my favorite. It is, it's just my favorite. So I don't like flying, I hate it. But if I am gonna fly, you best believe, bitch, I'm gonna fly as comfortably as humanly possible. I don't even care because there is no price to put on comfort. I don't care what you say, there isn't. Once you're comfortable, bitch, you will find a way to make sure that you have that experience every time. I'll never forget the first time I was in first class. So. Like I said, it was my 30th birthday slash we just got married. And <laughs> I'm so used to being treated like cattle in the back of the plane. So I had no idea what to expect. I knew it was gonna be better. I didn't realize it was gonna be this good. We flew Delta, which by the way is pretty much primarily what I fly. And I'll never forget, we sit down in our seats, which by the way, are so much bigger. <laughs> So much bigger than what you get in economy or premium economy, whatever that bullshit is. And I'll never forget the flight attendant came over and said, you know, hi, would you like something to drink before we take off? And I thought to myself, you know, I think I will partake in something. So I was like, I'll have a glass of champagne. <laughs> Like I just got so like I am literally Robin Leach. This is the lives of the rich and famous. I might as well start acting like it. So of course, flight attendant, of course, of course, miss, I will get that for you. And they called me miss too, which I was like, yes, bitch. Now it's ma'am, which I'm like, go fuck yourself, but whatever. So <laughs> she disappears into the little cubby that's like all the food and drink and stuff like that. And she comes back and she has like a little plastic cup, same kind of cup that you get in economy. And she gives it to me and she starts apologizing, apologizing profusely. Miss, I am so incredibly sorry. As soon as we get in the air, we will make sure that you have a glass in your hand. Like we, we just, we will make sure that plastic's gone. I remember looking at Alex and being like, I could get used to this shit. Like this is like wild, okay? I never thought in a million years that is how they're gonna treat somebody in first class. Bitch is apologizing for giving me plastic. Like that is so beneath me. Little does she know like the night before I was chugging a Capri Sun and vodka. You know what I mean? Like trash. <laughs> so I was like, this is kind of amazing. Like, kind of amazing. I love this. So 
after that moment and the bigger seats, which pff, for my babies that are big babies too, yo, the bigger seats is like where it's at. It is, is amazing. It's so good. And it gives you peace of mind too, because you're like, ah, like I'm gonna spread the fuck out and I'm not gonna hit anybody. It's so good. I can't go back, I can't go back. Needless to say, from that moment, my fear of flying, while still there, it's definitely subdued a little bit because I get to drink out of a glass and be treated like a proper human being. It's funny, when I compare this experience to say, economy, an economy, if I wanted a bottle of water, not only are they just gonna ask me to open my mouth so they could spit in it, but if they do provide me some sort of plastic bottle of water, it is the fucking hottest water possible. It's like they purposely boil them and like sterilize them and be like, I think this is safe to drink. Like, who does this? I hate it. I absolutely hate it. <sighs> but first class, mm. and they give you food. I don't, it's a whole experience. If you can do it, I recommend it. Listen, you can't take that money with you in the grave, okay? You might as well spoil yourself every now and again. And go fucking fly comfortably. Enjoy yourself. Treat yourself, bitch, all right? This world's ending. It's ending, so you might as well do all the things that you wanted to do, all right? <sighs> but my story's not about first class, it's not. No, you know what it's about? It's about airport security. <sighs> Fucking airport security. Before I get into it though, so my face I feel like it's not bad, it's nice and neutralized. I mean, I do see some redness poking through, but it's not terrible. I'm just gonna add just a little bit more right in this part of my face, because I feel it. On top of it, I'm gonna throw the Jones Road stuff on it. I still don't know how I feel about Jones Road. I feel like it's just mediocre. I'm not seeing the benefits of it. I picked up actually the What The Foundation, and I had no interest at first, I, or I kind of was confused because all I remember all the undertones looked really pink and it was scary looking, but there was a lot of shit online about it from this one TikToker and she like, I don't know, used way too much or whatever, and people came for her and blah, 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 blah. It kind of, honestly, I was interested from that moment and I was like, you know what? I want to see what all the fucking hype and fuss is about because there's, I feel like two camps here. There are people that really enjoy it and there's people that really, really just don't like it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna throw my motherfucking hat in the ring and I'm gonna see if I like it. I've tried it about three times now. It's not memorable. It's not. There's nothing about it that I'm like, ooh. Like, it's always like, uh. Like, it's okay. I feel like it's kind of more of a pain in the ass if you ask me. I like my other lighter coverage options, my my Chantecaille, my Pure Lease. I like those better than I like this one. But I keep thinking, well, maybe it's because you're applying it differently. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But I have this today that I'm going to use, and I'm going to use a little stick concealer. This is like the face pencil. We're gonna use that all over my base today. So this is what it looks like. It looks fucking gnarly. It looks kind of gross. You dip your little, little thingy in it and you start to feel like the little pearls of product. It's kind of unsettling because you feel like, oh shit, did I accidentally eat some Oreos in this? <laughs> So did I have it open and I was just crunching on Oreos? Because what is this weird fucking crunchy texture? But once you start to kind of massage it in the back of your hand, the little balls start to disappear and it's much, much better. I have tried to apply it a few different ways. I found the best way is with my fingers and then kind of going over it lightly with a sponge. Something like this. Because if I try to use my dick sponge, it doesn't have the same effect. But I also can't do it too hard. Like I have to like gingerly put this on. That's why it's like, it's kind of annoying to put this on. And it's funny because like I'm all about finding these like lighter coverage options because it's so fucking hot here. But I also don't wanna have to spend so much fucking time with a product, right? Like I wanna be able to slap it on my face and be on my way. And I feel like I can't do that with this. Like I'm babying it too much. And it kinda comes off a little splotchy so I'm just gonna take my sponge. Is that enough fingering myself? The one thing that I do like about this is I love how it sits on my nose. I think it's really pretty. But you see how like it's still like, uh, I don't know. This is incredibly light coverage, which like I said, normally I'm not that mad about, but like, I feel like it's just taking up the product right there. So I'm kind of going to go back in with this. Well, maybe this is actually what I need right there. Cause it's just, it won't stick to this part of my face. It's the weirdest fucking thing. Yeah, it's weird. It's like how the foundation sits right here. So I put the Eborian right over this part, but there is the foundation kind of cakes up. You see that? <laughs> it's just gross. It won't melt beautifully into the skin. I want it to melt so badly and it just fucking won't. And I like, I try my best not to use too much product, but so I'm just going to go in a little bit more with the Jones Road. 
Okay, I think this is the best that we're gonna do. You do see some redness poking through. Ugh, not my favorite. I, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like it. It's too much fucking hoop jumping for something that's just so, like I just look wet. <laughs> <laughs> and normally I don't mind looking wet, but like I still see the redness. I feel like it's so blotchy. I don't I don't like it. But to continue to fuck up my face, we're just gonna move on to the Shantikai face tint. So this is the anti-aging face tint that came out recently and Listen, I love the anti-aging line. I fucking love that line. This is essentially like a, a liquid bronzer per se. So you're just gonna take a little bit of it and you're going to put it in the back of your hand. See how the color is. It's very, very warm. That's why I'm like not the biggest fan of it, but I find that if you do it this way, it looks so much nicer than just applying it straight from the product, which is incredibly, incredibly pigmented. But basically I use this as if I am applying bronzer, okay? So I went in just like a handful of times. It's a very, very warm glow so I'm just going to use a teeny tiny little Sonichi brush if I can find it of course. I'm gonna go in with the mini face base brush to this guy and I'm just gonna take it straight to the brush and I basically just apply this as if I'm applying bronzer. I don't like to go too heavy-handed with this because then I could start to look like the fucking lady from <laughs> From there's something about Mary, okay? You know, the fucking one lady that smokes cigarettes and it looks like a fucking handbag? Yeah, I start to look like her. And, uh, not good. Not good, Jan. Not good. So, let's see. I don't know, it's, it's not terrible, per se. I'm not a fan of the color. Like I said, you do a little bit too much and it's game over. But I am giving you the appearance of, like, a nicely bronzed chicken, which is always great. So once I have it where I need it to be, I'm gonna go over it with my shop misse papa sponge just to marry the two not bad not bad all right so this is what we have so far and i'm just gonna go in now i'm gonna go in with the face pencil in shade one by the way the jones road i believe that's the lightest shade i had which is porcelain I'm pretty sure that's the lightest shade this product you know i it's okay i definitely think the little bobby brown face concealer is so much better and also not super annoying to use. My issue with this is that it's kind of rough. I think I need to sharpen it just a little bit. I wanna put some there. I need to put some concealer here because I'm starting to see all the little fucking red bits I have, which is normally something I don't do. This looks a little bit much for me, but I just see all this fucking creepy redness poking through. Like I said, it's it's definitely much, much better than the What The Foundation, in my opinion. And I'm actually gonna go all over my eye with it too, which is something I don't normally do, but just want it to all look like one color. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. I'm just gonna add some of it down here. Basically, I'm just gonna fucking paint my face with this crayon because this is definitely what's saving me right now. I'm just gonna go right there where it's a little more red. I'm just gonna use my finger where it's sensitive. I feel like this is the best that I'm gonna do with this product. Not terrible. Now I feel like, I feel like I should definitely fuck around with some sort of a liquid blush. Now I technically have the Pure Lease ones, which I have not played with yet. So maybe we'll use the Cool Moth. I don't know, we'll try it, we'll give it a whirl. If this is anything like their BB cream, I'm gonna love it. We're just gonna gonna put it on with my finger first. I do have the little brush from Sonya G in my hand, but I kind of want to see if maybe, because everything is so fucking volatile, maybe <laughs> this might be better if I just apply it with my finger. Okay, where was I? Oh, that's right, traveling. So I had to go to New York twice last month and the first time I went to New York, I went by myself and I feel like traveling by yourself, I know some people really enjoy it. I don't like it because I often find that I'm bored and I love Alex and we're one of those weirdo couples that we like being with each other. I know, like we love sitting together. We don't even have to be doing anything. Like he could be playing video games and I could be watching The Sopranos, which is so good by the way. We just want to be in the same room. Ew, right? <laughs> Most couples are like, I can't stand him. I'm like, no, I want to be next to him all the time. I love him. If he is not within arm's reach of me grabbing him, I, f I hate it. I hate, I hate everything. <laughs> so I, I gave him the option if he wanted to come to New York with me, but it was going to be a, a co-worker's wedding. And I was like, do you really want to sit and hear us talk about TPS reports? Okay. And how Jan sucks. Or do you want to just stay home? And he's like, I want to stay home. I'm like, 
I don't blame you. So of course, he stayed home, but that meant I had to fend for myself in the big scary airport. Now what I find funny is <laughs> when you're leaving Orlando to go to New York, people are fucking miserable because it's mostly families that spent way too much money that really just like are starting to question if they ever should have had a family to begin with. Like everyone's having existential crisis. Someone's having a meltdown at Burger King. It's kind of hilarious to watch, right? <laughs> But when you are coming from JFK to Orlando, everybody is so happy because they're, I would say 90% of the people on that flight are going to be on vacation. So it's the start of their vacation. And they're really excited and they're like, yay. But then coming home, they're like miserable little twats. Now, for me, I had no issues going to New York. Sat next to a lovely woman on the plane, had no issues with anything. There was no turbulence, no nothing. The in-flight meal was still pretty good. Like it was fine. I had a fine time. It's when I came home, it was the issue. So I went for a long weekend. That's kind of cute, right? We're just gonna, we're just gonna do this. I don't wanna fuck it up anymore. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And we're gonna call it a day. I feel so virginal. I do love that this is a light, light option. And I'm actually kind of surprised that it's even showing up considering my face, I feel like looks really, really tan. Anyway, I was coming home on Monday, 11 o'clock on Sunday night. I get an email at 11 o'clock on Sunday night for my seven o'clock morning flight. Delta canceled it. Mm. Not only did they cancel it, but they gave me a new set of options of what I could do. Because of this inconvenience, they said, okay, you know what we can do for you? We can get you a flight at 9 a.m. to DC, then DC to Atlanta, and then Atlanta to Orlando. I wanna repeat that, because it bears repeating. JFK to DC, DC to Atlanta, Atlanta to Orlando. I didn't realize that going on the Oregon Trail was much fucking faster than me trying to get home. So I was like, ah. No. Now, I could have stayed an extra day, but I had to go back to work on Tuesday. I had a bunch of fucking meetings that I couldn't get out of. So I was like, I need to get home, but it cannot take 18 hours. <laughs> like, I need to get home today. So I found the only flight available was leaving out of Newark. Newark. And if you're from New York, you know. It's like, ugh, Newark. <sighs> Newark. I had to go to Newark to catch a United flight. They only had one seat left. Of course it was in first class. <laughs> but they had one seat left and I was like, you know what? I don't care at this point. I don't care how much it takes for me to get home. I just need to get home. So I was flying out of Newark. Okay, I'm just gonna go in my flower beauty and we're gonna set this bitch. Oh, okay. Not bad, not bad. I look pretty fucking adorable. So I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute because we're gonna do highlighter and we're gonna do eyes and all that stuff in a second. I'm actually gonna... The thing that I have that's pretty new, I... I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it happened, y'all, but I wound up <laughs> I wound up picking up the Kylie Cosmetics um, Stassi collection or whatever because I thought I thought it was gonna be the palette and it wasn't the palette. Instead, I got everything else but the palette and ugh, whatever. But here's the highlighter and the highlighter is actually not terrible. It's not bad. It's a gold highlighter. Does it really go with this look? No, but I don't really fucking care. So we're gonna apply that to the face. So I'm gonna take my Sonia G, my mini cheek brush, put it right there. It's definitely gold and it's very meat sweaty, which I'm not mad at. I'm gonna do a little something wild right now. I'm gonna take this pink glowy blush from Lethal because I kind of want to just put that right over that highlighter. I feel like it's a little too stark for the face right now and like not in a cute way but i think keeping it with the nude blush it's pretty cute i'm just gonna go in with a little chantecaille this is the hd perfecting powder i really really like this stuff i just wanted to diffuse it down just a little bit because it's not the kind of highlighter that's melting into the skin it's sitting on top of it which is really annoying so, so it's like I, I don't really recommend like it's blinding but like not in a good way which sucks but shit happens when you're a fucking idiot and you purchase a kylie collection <laughs> Because you think it's the palette. The dumb, dumb, dumb bitch. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna go in with my finger there. Cause we now we gotta have to fucking match this energy because this is not going away. So we're just gonna, we're gonna do that. I'm just gonna spray my face with some setting spray. I have to thank Mel Thompson for this one. She has turned me on to La Mer setting spray. I feel like a complete bougie asshole. I love it. Miss you, Mel. <sighs> All right, I'm just gonna. All right, not bad. I feel very glowy, not terrible. This is probably the best I've ever made the Jones foundation look. I'll fucking take it. <laughs> 
at this point I'll fucking take it. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep, keep my eye look very, very simple. I'm gonna go in with something that I have just fucking been obsessed with and it's, it's just so good. So this is from Blend Bunny Cosmetic. This is called the Dollhouse Palette. It's a neutral, neutral bitch. When I do my next basic bitch palette video, this will definitely be featured high up there. This is fucking fantastic. I haven't played around with the shimmers too much, but the mattes, the mattes baby, it's where it's at. And the two times that I was in New York, well, for the wedding, I actually wore my Tom Ford palette because it was something that I just needed to like look simple and just elegant for the whole night. But a combination of the Blend Bunny Cosmetics plus the new Lethal Cosmetics Multi Chromes, the combination of the two is fucking earth shattering, life changing. I love them so very fucking much. And it's kind of hard not to want to put a multi-chrome on my eyes today. You know what? We're gonna do a multi-chrome. Fuck it, we're gonna do a multi-chrome. We're gonna do a multi-chrome, we're gonna do a multi-chrome. I have to, I have to. After just touching them one time, I need to do it. I need to do it. <laughs> so to go with my NARS soft matte. So I had to fly to Newark. Love that for me. I'm gonna go in with the shade display. The drive from Queens to Newark wasn't bad. It was uneventful. Had a lovely, lovely Dial 7s driver. I got Dial 7s because the pricing on Uber was whoo, bitch. <laughs> it was a lot. So I had my Dial 7s driver. I felt so fancy. Very nice gentleman. We talked about uh, Queens extensively and he was asking me questions about Florida because it sounds like he wanted to move. I'm going to go in with the shade Attic. So I check into my United flight and there's like nobody in the airport. I'm thinking, oh my God, like, you know what? All these years I've been like shit on Newark. Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe this is amazing. Maybe what I'm about to experience is going to be the best thing ever. And in the future, I want to fly out of Newark. <laughs> I said nobody ever. So, <laughs> so I check in and you know, listen, I am spoiled by JFK Airport. One, I used to work for them a long, long time ago. That place was wild. Okay. The shit that I would see <laughs> And I worked for all the international flights, so it was hilarious. Um, I used to get yelled at in several different languages every day. It was, it was fucking great. I uh, love that for me. So she went, oh, this one man thought I was trying to steal his duty-free shit. I was like, sir, I can afford my own scotch. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I was like 21 at the time. <laughs> I couldn't. He didn't know that. Anyway, so I'm spoiled by JFK because like security, everything is very simple. Like I know where to go, blah, blah, blah. When this is the first time you've ever been somewhere, obviously it's that much more stressful because you're like, where am I going? Am I going to the right place? Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And I was trying to figure out where exactly was security. I found security and I noticed that, oh, you, there's not even really a huge line for security. Fuck, maybe I picked the best time to come back to go home. So if you haven't flown into the airport recently. There's this large, uh, I can only describe it as like a giant x-ray fucking microwave box. Like <laughs> if you had a Barbie dream home, if your parents loved you enough, just kidding. <laughs> But if you had a Barbie dream home growing up or you've had any sort of like doll house where there was like some sort of like secret kind of compartment, like it was like almost cylindrical and it go and it would have like a door and it would be like and it would close and open. That's kind of like the vibe of this basically. And essentially you stand in the box, you put your arms like above your head, you know, like ha like that. <laughs> You spread your legs really wide and they take a scan of you. And then when you come out, you basically look like a Michelin man outline. Like it's just, I don't know what it looks like for skinny people, but for fat people, you basically look like a Michelin man. Then you'll see like these really wild, like yellow boxes that are like danger, danger. Like go, you need to go check out these areas. This happens to me every time. I usually get felt up every time I have to go through this. And I actually found out from the one TSA agent, what they told me to do is like basically take my pants and like really pull them up like past my nipples up you know what I mean like really up because by doing so it doesn't create the extra fabric that they don't need to like seriously like just reach down and touch everything <laughs> you know what I mean so um of course I only knew about that the second time I was flying to New York so unfortunately past me didn't realize that so of course it got set off I needed to get searched um this lady that searched me had no problem just literally showing my goods like she's like you want to do this here you want to do this in the back and I was like I literally like looked around at all the people and I said I'm not gonna see these people again it's fine and she's like okay literally a show like I, I honestly should have collected money from those people okay <laughs> like I put on a fucking performance for them after getting searched and finding nothing um what they also do is they swab your hands just to make sure there's no I don't want to say it because it'll just totally 
I can't say the word out loud, but they just try to make sure that you don't have any other dangerous materials on your hands or anything that can cause something to go awry. <laughs> Figure it out, follow the dot. Wait, I'm gonna go back in with the attic shade just a little more. Once that is all said and done, what you have to do is you wait for your bags, right, to go through the metal detector. And this particular metal detector had two different like paths. So the bags that were good were on the right side. The bags that weren't good that need to be checked were on the left side. My bag is on the left side. And I'm like, oh God. In that moment, you start having irrational thoughts like, oh my God, did I pack all that cocaine? Things that you know would never be in your bag, but you are so convinced that are there because that's the only reason why it's on the left side. It's not because maybe you put a water bottle in there when you shouldn't have. No, you automatically think that you have weapons and drugs in your bag. So I had to wait like 15 minutes. Mind you, I have no shoes on because you know, you have to put your shoes in the machine. And I kind of forget this every time not to wear socks, right? So I am standing on the gross cold linoleum floor that is Newark airport waiting for my bag. I'm starting to sweat now. Like I am sweating because I'm like, what did I put in my bag? I don't remember putting anything in my bag. Oh my God, maybe there's like a giant bazooka in there. I start having wild thoughts because I'm trying to figure out why the fuck would my bag get checked quickly here with one bunny I just like using two colors put them in the crease and then I'm just going to take lethal cosmetics and I'm just gonna throw it all over the lid I'm going to put this shade in here I'm just gonna pop the name down here this is kind of like a, a lavender blue yellow kind of a moment it's very light it's very pretty so we're gonna go with that I'm gonna take some NYX glitter glue and basically I'm just gonna take the NYX glitter glue and just put it all over my lid to create a nice adorable sticky base and all I need to do is just go over, take that existing brush, put the product, so pretty. And I just put this all over the lid. That's it, that's it. It's sparkly, it's pretty. It has like a blue, gold, yellow moment and actually kind of ties in nicely with the goldy kind of a highlighter that I have on my face today. So that's pretty much what it looks like. Pretty cute, I like it. It's very simple, but I will take the brush that I had like the darker matte just to kind of go back into the crease and just kind of blend where the edge of the multi-chrome is to the matte shadow. It's a nice like little light moment. I'm gonna use a giant fluffy brush and ta-da! How cute is that? All right, I'm gonna jump off into the other eye and then we're gonna talk about security. Okay, so I could do two things here. I could fuck it up <laughs> and use the liners that are from the Kylie Cosmetics collection. I have used them and they're nice. I don't have any issues with them, but I don't necessarily know if they technically go with this look. So it's like, do I do that? Do I risk? putting a little like say the blue one just like say maybe maybe we'll do it right here just in the beginning and then maybe we'll take a black shadow or a brown shadow maybe and use it on the rest of the lid because I find that if I use light eyeliners, it makes me look weird. Does that make sense? Like the lighter it is, especially on the top lash line, it kind of just makes me look like there's something wrong. <laughs> like the call is coming from inside the house. I, I th That's the best way that I can explain it. But uh, I'm just gonna go in with the blue one and I'm just gonna like just stop right there. Just do a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. The tip is not the smoothest tip in the world, but I like the actual formula of it because it doesn't irritate my eye and it doesn't bleed so if I, I can actually get this pretty close to the inner corner so for my sensitive babies this is a nice option all right so I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to take the blend bunny I'm gonna take a darker color so <sighs> Since it's blue, I'm gonna go in with the brown color Fasten. I'm gonna use that as a liner color. I feel like the blue is not really doing anything for me right now. <laughs> so like the little blue eyeliner that I did put down, it's not really doing anything. I probably shouldn't have done that. It's not really adding anything to the look. So I'll definitely use that a, a different video. So I'm actually finding myself going over <laughs> that blue that I put down. That's all right. It's for the best. Yeah, it's just not going with that. Put a little Lethal Cosmetics on just in the lower lash line. It's gonna go in with the shade Harmony from Lethal Cosmetics. That oh, looks pretty cute. Okay, not bad, not bad. Okay, I'm just going to curl my lashes. I'm gonna go in with Lancome today. So I'm gonna go in with this shade from Lethal Cosmetics and I'm just gonna pop it in the inner corner. Oof, yes. Beautiful, stunning glowy goddess. 
Yes. I just have to figure out what to do in the lower lash line. I'm gonna go back into the Blend Bunny just to finish this up and finish my story. So I'm gonna go back into the shade Attic and under the purple, I'm just gonna kind of stamp it and sweep it very, very slowly to about three quarters of the eye. I don't wanna make it too stark. So here I am standing on the disgusting floor waiting for my bag. And after a little bit, they finally call my bag. And this whole time I am pouring buckets of sweat because I firmly believe that someone broke down palace me, okay? <laughs> someone put something in my bag. I'm gonna end up in prison. I had this whole fucking story in my head that I'm like, this, this is it, this is it. I'm gonna fucking kiss everything goodbye. The TSA agent grabs my bag and says, whose bag is this? I'm like, mine. I walk over to the little desk and he looks me in my face and says, there's a knife in your bag. Uh, uh, how? How is there a knife in my bag? I don't even own a knife other than a steak knife that's sitting perfectly in my kitchen drawer. That's the only fucking knife I own. What are you talking about? There's a knife in my bag. Of course I didn't say that. All I said was, uh, so he says, before I open this bag, is there anything that will hurt me? I don't know. <laughs> so I was just like, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I just, I had no idea what the fuck to say. He opens my bag and what I, I was going to a wedding, right? I had a handbag, I had a handbag on me. And it was a nice, it's a nice handbag. I love handbags. And I didn't want to check it in my bag for the fear of it being lost or someone taking it or whatever. That's why I wanted to carry it with me. The shape of the bag, which is a normal bag, apparently tricked the x-ray machine into thinking that that was a knife. It was a handbag. And when he took it out and looked at it, he went, that's so weird. In the machine, it looked like a big knife. And I was like, Nope, it's just a handbag. And I, I started to kind of feel like the wave of like relief wash over me. The other thing I didn't tell y'all is when I'm traveling by myself, it doesn't matter the mode of transportation, whether it's a train or a plane. I, and if I'm by myself, I bring my emotional support sloth with me. And I feel like more people should have emotional support stuffed animals because they're definitely needed in these crisis type situations. Any hoosies. I guess in my thinking that I somehow was going to get broke down palace, <laughs> I forgot that I also had my stuffed sloth in the back. So he tells the TSA agent, once he takes the bag out, he was like, wait a second, what is this? And he like takes out my sloth, my sweet little baby, and he like looks at it. I, I honestly thought he was gonna take a giant knife and like cut open him and just be like, is the knife in here? Like. <laughs> because even though he said that the handbag was the thing that triggered it, he looked at this animal as if this is the thing that has the knife in it. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, am I gonna really just have a panic attack right now that <laughs> this man hurts my baby? Oh, fuck. So you know what he does? Instead, the same thing that they did to my hands to make sure that there was no weird materials on them, they swapped my little sloth and his little, his little hands, they swapped them. And they had to check to make sure that he didn't have any materials on him. Let's just say my sloth is very, very traumatized, okay? And is thinking about contacting a lawyer <laughs> for emotional stress. But once they realized that everything was clean, they put everything back in my bag and the guy was like, huh, it's funny, I thought it was a knife. Guess not, here you go, enjoy your day. <sighs> I never had my bag ever check. Alex has had his stuff checked before because if he's like flying with his like Xbox or something like that, they'll go and they'll like look at it and examine it and make sure that it's not anything wild or whatever. But this was the first time that it was a fucking handbag that triggered the system. But this was the first though. It was a fucking handbag that triggered the system and they had to swap down my sloth to me, which sounds really dirty when you think about it, just to make sure that, um, you know, we were good law abiding citizens. Anyway, after that whole thing, right, like of just flashing people in the airport, having my little stuffed sloth taken out and examined, probed if you will, all the people that were at the security checkpoint were the same motherfuckers that were at my gate. So I just felt so like, they were just like, that's, that's, look at her, look at that lady. Like, mm. like I've never felt like more on display in my whole life. I hated it. <laughs> 
freaking hated every second of it. I'm just gonna go in lower lash line just to use a little more Lancome. Just, just a little. Not bad, pretty cute. Okay, here's the last thing that we can do. Um, Cause everything else is not looking super bad. I'm not that mad about this. I think this is the best that we're gonna do in this situation. Kylie has a couple of different lip kits, right? So we have like the normal, which actually I don't even really mind at all. It's uh, basically a lip liner and a liquid lip, or we have this one, which is a lip gloss. This is a lip gloss kit. This is a high gloss duo. So this is in like this, Oh uh, yeah, oh uh, yeah. Real estate pink look. So actually, hold on. I'm gonna see if I can. I'm gonna use a little bit of that lip liner from the lip kit set, cause it's like a nice nudie pink. I'm just gonna add some of this lip gloss on top of it. Okay, I think I like that. So yeah, so this is a completed overall look. Not bad, it's not bad, considering I had my issues with the base. Like, it really isn't bad. So now I wanna hear from y'all. Let me know down below if you have any of these products, if you love them, if you hate them, or if you don't care. Let me know, because I love hearing from you. Also, if you have any airport bar stories, let me know, I'd love to hear them. <laughs> And thank you again to Blissy for sponsoring today's video. And with that said, I want to say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, it's free, and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, to all my beautiful, wonderful patron bubbies. Thank you so much for keeping this delicious, disgusting, filthy, trashy, really trashy, really filthy, really gross, really nasty, really disgusting, really. Garbage butter flow, I couldn't do without you. I love your adorable little delicious faces. I just want to gobble you all up so you live inside my belly. If you want to know what's currently in my face, everything that I talked about in today's video will be listed in the description box below and I'll see you little pumpkins later. Bye!